we want to welcome you to University United Methodist Church. are a Christ-centered community of believers engaging disciples into mission.
Good morning, this is Pastor John here at University United Methodist Church in Indianapolis, Indiana, and this is a great time to open the Word of God as we begin to see what God is saying to us uh, on today. And so I hope you have your mobile device, I hope you have your Bible with you, and wherever you are, I want you to take an opportunity to hear what God is saying to us. Um, this is, of course, a wonderful time for us to create new relationships in the body of Christ with God. Uh, so let us begin to see what God is saying and let us talk about the spirit of revival that God has in our midst and let's make sure that we are a part of it. So get your mobile device ready, get your Bible prepared and we're going to see what thus says the Lord. Let us pray. Uh, dear God, we give you thanks for this day, this very moment that you have given us. God, we pray that we can continue to hear your voice, your love, your compassion for us uh, as we began to serve our community, as we began to find new life uh, in our relationship with you. So, Lord, be with us. Continue to guide us as we hope and pray and lean on you to structure and lead us into a better today and tomorrow. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, we find ourselves in Ephesians chapter 5 uh, for this Sunday. And if you have been prepared or, or if you have been in our Bible study, of course, on Tuesdays, uh, we have been in a conversation about Ephesians, but I'm going to make sure all of us are on the same chord as we continue to talk about this book. Uh, so in, in Ephesus, there is a cultural shift that happens uh, in chapter 5. And in that cultural shift, we realize that there are Gentiles that are present that may not have been the same grouping of Gentiles that we're familiar with from the Gospels. Um, these are persons who are now moving into Ephesus uh, who have brought in a different culture, who have a different spirit, who are different in how they serve, they are different in their behaviors, and they are not necessarily the same uh, Gentiles that are Christian. And so, of course, we know we have Jews and Jewish uh, Christians that are present uh, all in this, this, this space together. But right now, we're homing in on this relationship of those Gentiles that are present in Ephesus um, that are encouraging people to live a life that is different from the life which they have seen laid out by Christ. So persons have heard the stories, they have seen um, the books written by Paul, these letters, uh, and, and there is a cultural change that is present. But sometimes as time goes by, we find ourselves around others um, who may not understand, who don't know, or who are intentionally leading people astray uh, and away from the teachings of Christ. So now we find ourselves dealing with a culture of those who are identified as fornicators, uh, those who are living a life of, of a different sin uh, in Ephesus, and it is bleeding onto those who are identify as followers of Christ. So my sermon for today or this conversation that we have is about waking up and not being asleep. And we're going to have some wonderful texts and scripture reading and also a little bit of a hymn um, to see what is happening in this season, but also to give us an opportunity to see what God is saying in this spirit of revival that we have. So let us begin to look at Ephesians chapter 5. So we start right here in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 6. He says, let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes on those who are disobedient. Therefore do not associate with them, for once you were in darkness. He says, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of the light. So the conversation begins here as we who are followers of God may find it easy to follow behind those who appear to give us this false doctrine or theology or way of life that says something can be easier or better for us if we do it this way. Yo, we can be deceived by empty words because the truth is no man walking who put places on their pants just like you or their skirt <laughs> can save you from a life of sin or can change what is happening around you. These fake lies and promises are designed to separate the body of Christ. And it's easy for us to allow someone else's words to lead us astray when God is saying, look, you know me. You have been in my presence. You have seen what the light is. So be as children of the light. And let us not look at the ways of darkness, the lies and deceptions that come, because it seems easy. Y'all, we got to be careful about that. 
He goes on and he says this in verse, uh, in, in verse number 14. Let's go back to verse 12. He says, for it is shameful even to mention what such people do secretly. But then in verse 14, he says, for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore, it says, sleeper awake, arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Y'all, that means that there must be a time that we who are asleep began to wake up. And I talk about the spirit of revival because for many of us, the spirit of revival takes something that is dead and brings it back to life. Now, I want to put a pause there, and it's important because uh, in the spirit of revival, some of us who have been in church a while or who have experienced these things uh, in a different way will remember revivals of the old school. When some people would have tent meetings or have uh, services outside or would have these evening services uh, throughout the week as they begin to bring in speakers and allow God to move like never before, reviving us, bringing life back into the church, back into we who are the church. Because a time has come when we fall asleep as time goes by. We become complacent and confused or lazy. But a time must come, and that is the season of the revival that says something that is dead can, can be revived. Something that is lost can be found. Something that is, is needed shows up and changes everything. Y'all, we are in a season now where God wants to revive the church and not these buildings, but us, the people. God wants to pour new life into us. But y'all, sometimes we must remember <laughs> what's going on around us. One of the greatest things about being in revival is that it brings life into places where we said, Lord, I was tired, but now I'm afresh. I'm anew. And we need the spirit of the revival. We need a true spiritual revival to come into this place and transform us who are God's followers. Now, we are in a time right now where those who have empty voices are talking very loud. They don't care about you. <laughs> they don't care about the country, your city. They don't care about anything, the church or God. They are concerned about themselves, making a profit and power. But he says, wake up. Sleeper, wake up. Yeah, there is revival that is touching the land. And if you remain asleep, you are going to miss what is about to happen. Watch this. In 1742, Charles Wesley uh, preached a sermon, and he said this as it was also titled, uh, Wake Up. He says, Awake, thou that sleepest. He says, Awake, thou everlasting spirit, out of a dream of a world of happiness. He says, Did not God create you for himself? Therefore, you cannot just rest in him. Return, he says, and wanderer. He says, fly back to the ark. He says, this is not your home. He goes on and says, think, he says, not a building, a tabernacle here. Don't, don't do it. He says, because you are a stranger, a sojourner on this earth. He says, a creature of the day, but just launching out into an unchangeable state. Make haste, eternity is at hand. Y'all, he is telling people, look, it is far easy for us to become comfortable in this season where we are, to, to nest ourselves and become lazy and complacent or to get caught up in systems that have no spiritual value. Y'all, we are reminded of Revelations chapter 3, the church of Sardis, where everybody there was doing stuff by routine and lacking a spiritual ignite or spark that says we are yet alive. And in, in, in Revelation 3, it says, wake up for what remains is about to die. Y'all, we are in a season of the revival and we need God to move right now. Not tomorrow, not next week. We need God to begin to move and to, to show God's self in the, the space. And how we do that is by proclaiming and calling God's name, by resting in God's word and declaring who God is in us. But y'all, we forget to do that sometimes because we are listening to those empty voices run their mouth continuously. Y'all, the majority of the people are not like everybody else. No, but we're silent and sleeping. At some point, the church, which is asleep, must wake up. At some point, those who are in the church must wake up. We who are quiet and lazy must begin to speak because things are happening around us. And we have been asleep. Complacent, dreaming, content, tired, 
retired. <laughs> now it's time to wake up. I begin to think about what God is saying to us, we who are the believers. We who have the power to call down from heaven, God, God's self. What would God do if we who were the believers of God began to say, Lord, we need you in this place? If we began to humble ourselves, if we began to, to take on our robes and our mantles and our callings and begin to serve like we have in the past, or for those who did not in the past but are creating a new culture, what would happen to this land if we began to operate by thus says the Lord? But y'all, we can't keep following politicians and entertainers and athletes. Mm, I'm happy for what some of them do. But we follow Jesus Christ, who died for me. None of those people died for me. But Christ did, that I may have power and authority from the heavens to declare what thus says the Lord in this season. Wake up, you who sleep. You know, there is an opportunity for us to begin to see what God is saying and doing right now. But the church has to wake up. Y'all, I already know. These are some comfortable sofas that we own. And you can get the lazy boys that have the, the, the vibrating cushions and the, the, the foot release. And then you can lean all the way back and go to sleep with your remote in your hand. Praise be to God for the lazy boy and the spirit of, of those who believe in comfort. We love you. We thank you. But I need you to get up. I need you to begin to do something a little bit different because God is waiting and God is all powerful. And there is a time when we expect for God to move like never before and God will move the mountains. And I promise you he'll do it because God's word said God will. Let us look at what Isaiah says about this. Isaiah 64 begins a litany of words that tells us about God's power as God begins to transform an entire mountain landscape, showing us that God is power, God is might, and God is yet present. Isaiah 64 says this, Oh, that you would tear up the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence. As when fire kindles the brushwood, he says, and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known among your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds, we did not expect. You came down and the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived. He says, and no eye has seen, he says, any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. He says, you meet those gladly who do right, those who remember you in their ways. Yep, that is the power of God that uh, Elijah begins to tell us, really comes down and sees us. This is the spirit of the revival, the power of God when the midst of everything happening. And if we go back through the conversation in Isaiah, we see that things were bad. <laughs> Situations were tough. But in the midst of all of that, God comes down like power and might making the mountains shake. Brothers and sisters, we need mountains to begin to rumble right now. That is a revival of the Spirit of God that happens inside of us. As we begin to wake up and get out of those lazy spaces that we find ourselves, because y'all, it's so hard for us to do that. But in this season, this is an opportunity for we who are the church to show the power and might of God. So as we began to get out of those lazy boys, and as much as I know we love them, we must begin to be the church. We can no longer be the church in Sardis, a church that is asleep, a church that is doing things by ritualistic behaviors. Y'all, that is over. People need to know that God is present, and there's a voice for God in this season. So we worship God, and we come together as God's people, knowing that at any moment, <laughs> God will shake the mountains. And those who come against God will know that it's God. Just as water begins to boil and fire begins to consume, the power of God is relentless. And it's on our side. So we who have that feeling inside of us that says something is about to happen, I want you to know that God is about to have God's way. But God is going to do it through us. So we who are the church, let us begin to experience God's power in a different way. Let us begin to celebrate as the old hymn would tell us. 
knowing that Jesus is with us, Jesus who died for us, yet we have that same power today. So awake, O oh sleeper, you who have become comfortable, you who have begun to store up your, your, your storehouses and prepare for retirement, I need you to wake up. The community needs you, the church needs you, and the city needs you as we began to speak the power of God in today's reality. I want to close out with reading of uh, one verse out of a hymn, and I think it makes so much more sense as we begin to look at what God is doing in Ephesus, knowing that things were tough all around, but there's still an opportunity for those in Ephesus to transform and change the entire city, just as we can do today. This is what the hymn says. Awake, O sleeper. Verse 5, he says, For us Christ lived, for us Christ died, and conquered in the strife. Awake, arise, go forth in faith, and Christ shall give you life. Y'all, that is a hymn that tells us that we who are yet sleeping, <laughs> we who have become comfortable, Christ has died for us. That is our call to go forward. I charge you today this, that you be transformed like never before, that you allow God to speak inside your life. And if you are a person that has questioned the relationship of who God is and who Jesus is and his Holy Spirit, y'all, I pray that this, that God will speak to you today and that the power of love and compassion will overtake you, that you too will be a changing agent in your community, in your home and in your church. We thank you, we love you, and we worship the God that is around you, but we want you to wake up too. We need you in this season because something new is about to happen, and we want you to be a part of it. Let us pray. Dear God, we give you thanks and praise because you are awesome and wonderful to us. Lord, in this season, many of us have fallen asleep. And Lord, as we have fallen asleep, we are not seeing what's happening around us. So God, Allow us to wake up. Give us a new, fresh anointing, a fresh touch of your spirit that we may serve you like never before. God, we thank you, Lord, that we have not perished and fallen away. But God, as we have not fallen away, God, you have kept us where we are. So, Lord, as we begin to serve you in this season, let us help our brothers and sisters who are lost. And for those who do not know you, God, we pray a special blessing to them that they will begin to turn their life around and see who you are. Lord, this is the season for the church, the new church, the church that you are calling us to be, a church that is more concerned about its community and the people who are part of it than anything else. Lord, forgive us for the things that we have missed, but God, encourage us for the opportunity that is before. For God, we are pressing forward to the mark that has been laid out for us, and God, we are more than conquerors. So Lord, we thank you in Christ. Amen. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your Savior, we want to offer you that relationship today. As tough as it may seem, God is not a bad person, and I understand how life presents itself. But I want you to know that God so loved the world that God sent God's Son down just for you. And when Christ came down, Christ gave up his life just for you that you may have life more abundantly. So on this day, we pray that you have a relationship with Christ just by saying that I believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that he came and laid his life down just for me. If you can believe that, that starts the process. And in that process, you become better every day as you begin to know who Christ is in your life. And that relationship with God becomes a new and stronger every day. We are praying for you. We are encouraged by your faith, your love, and your compassion. Continue to serve, continue to love God, and continue to thus says the Lord as you talk to your friends, your family, and your loved ones. This is your season. This is the season for the church. So let us boldly walk into it as we begin to see mountains shake and oceans move. Amen.
Yeah.